You look like Earl. <laughs> I can't get it out of my head. You look just like Earl. And then he was like, you mean Merle? She goes, yeah, you look just like him. He's like, I am. And she went, How, how, um, you know, sometimes they'll talk about you <laughs> right next to you as if you can't hear them. That happened to me just on the flight here today. I was sitting in the terminal and I was just like sitting looking at my phone, and this cute little kid, eighth grader, and his little sister was like, "That's him." <laughs> <laughs> like, that's that. I was like, "Yes, it is. That's him." <laughs> Look at him. Yeah, like, this far away. <laughs> Like, what are you gonna do? I'm not gonna be like, I don't. Like, you can't ignore that. Like, so you just turn around and you go, Do you watch the show? And then he's like, He freaked out, which was really cool. But it's just like, in his head, he's like, He's not a person. He can't, he can't hear me. <laughs> so he's transported from the television to his own show. It's like, It's weird. But it's because people it's, can't hear. Yeah, no, we're all, you can only hear. But it was, it was, it's, it's, it's awesome. It's really cool. We, we were on the plane today and looking at the Southwest magazine, and I was sitting with Lauren and Norman was in front of us, and it's like, you know, movies, music, and TV, and there's a picture of Norman, and we're like, hey, that's that guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's just wild. It's so it's And then he signed one and he hid it in a pocket of the plane. Of the plane. So if you're the Southwest flight, check out your pocket. I've been in Georgia and I got pulled over by cops. And I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, what I do, what I do? And they go, are you that dude in the thing? <laughs>
know, I mean, Shane was supposed to go much quicker than he went. Like, I mean, the show's sort of its own animal right now, so I think all the characters are kind of wide open with where they can go, you know? It's kind of fun for me as, as a director on the show because I have a unique opportunity because I'm on the set every day for every episode, so I see the choices that the actors make. So, you know, the way it works most of the time is the directors fly and they do an episode and they go away. So they don't know the scenes that we shot two weeks earlier. So there's a consistency that, that and again, like Norman was saying, you know, watching our characters grow and change, and the changes that these two have gone through, the change that Daryl's gone through, where he sort of become, you know, Rick's right hand after Shane was gone and now all the stuff with, with him. Yeah, that would be useful in a natural disaster situation. <laughs> Such as an earthquake, hurricane, tsunami. Uh, I know to find um, food. <laughs> like if someone hides like the crafty table a couple stages down, I usually <laughs> come in. Like, so I imagine that would come in handy. <laughs> That's not even a like, serious. <laughs> that's kind of what I've learned. Yeah. And uh, here's one for Greg from Jared from South Milwaukee. Here, here. Yeah! What? Uh, oh. uh, what has been the most difficult makeup job you've undertaken on The Walking Dead? I think the, the first walker in the first episode, the bicycle girl in the park, the half walker. Uh, she was the first walker that we, that we saw on the show. Uh, Melissa Cowan was an actress that, that Frank cast. And they flew her to LA and we cast her body. So we had, she had a chest prosthetic and a back prosthetic and a face and a wig. Uh, so it took about three hours to do her makeup. And again, you know, what sets this show apart from other shows is you see that walker crawling through the field and when Rick walks up next to her and kneels down and says, I'm sorry this happened to you, and she's just weakly reaching up to him, and you actually feel compassion for this monster. I mean, it, it was amazing. That makeup job, I mean, we're really proud. They, and the network was very smart because in this day and age, everybody that has a cell phone or has Twitter or Instagram or anything, and they will take pictures. Norman literally took pictures of like, the zombie penises on dummies and stuff. <laughs> and we're trying to bust it for that. Because <laughs> all the dummies are anatomically correct. But <laughs> what we did in season one was that they were really smart. They released that photo as an opportunity to put out their, what the attention of the Walker look was going to be for the show before we were shooting in the streets with, with you and Andy and people were taking pictures of zombie makeup with their phones and putting them on the internet. So we do like the mystique of the show, and we want to preserve that. And there are lots of people that like spoilers, and I personally, I'm not on Twitter or Facebook, and I don't really read stuff that's talked about. Here on Twitter, don't lie. Oh, you got it covered for me. Here. Um, so I, it, it, it's exciting to me when the next day people will say, "I never saw that coming." You know, things that we do that that, that feels exciting and feels new. So. We have some. Uh...